Hi, it's Contex here with a series of videos about installing Debian 10 offline. Now, what do I mean by offline? Well, simply that the computer is not connected to the internet and the installation is purely done from the DVD images. Now, you may be wondering why that's an important thing to be able to do. Well, um, in my case, I've got a piece of hardware with a driver that only works with certain um, kernel versions within Debian 10 and more explicitly within certain subversions of Debian 10. So I think it's between Debian 10.1 and 10.12. What we're going to do is to download a live version of Debian um, operating system, install that on the computer. I'm going to create a partition on the computer to store the DVD images. We'll install the Jigdo program because it's not a part of the live image by default. And then we'll use that Jigdo package to download the DVD images themselves. And that'll take a number of hours, for example, on my internet speed, which isn't particularly fast. It takes, um, I think it's well over four hours, four or five, maybe even six hours to do. Um, now I've already got the DVD images downloaded because obviously like I say I'm using this so I'll just skip that uh, part of the uh, installation in the video and then once those DVD images are downloaded we can actually use the first DVD to reinstall Debian um, because obviously I want to go back to Debian 10 um, and even if I wanted a new one I'd reinstall it because that first DVD is part of that DVD set of 16 DVDs um, using the live DVD, I'm not sure how that would work because it's not part of a set. It's just a standalone um, DVD. It's been designed to download up late updates off the internet and so on. Um, whereas the DVD set are a complete set. There's even um, facilities to update that DVD set. Um, so that that's the reason why I would reinstall it, even if I was installing uh, reinstalling the latest version of Debian, I'll still reinstall it from the first DVD of the DVD set. Um, and yeah, when that's uh, installed, then I'll show how to get the latest updates, updated DVDs, and to um, allow the system to be updated with those DVDs. Right, so first of all, the first thing to do is to get the browser up and go to the Debian website. Now I found with the Debian website is when you're looking for DVDs to download, it seems to be quite hard I find to navigate. I don't know if it's me or if I'm, you know, I don't know the website very well, but I find it quite hard to navigate to specific areas to download things. It seems whenever I click on links, it says like download other versions of the images and so on here. It sort of takes you always to the latest version of Debian which I, you know, I can understand I want you to install the latest and greatest but um, it seems to be quite hard sometimes to actually get anywhere else and there, there is a lot of um, files and images and archives available with Debian it's just they're just a little bit awkward to get to so for example if I go to the um, main web page which is Debian www.debian.org um, if I go to download, it will by default take me to a web page for downloading Debian 11. But whenever I look through here, I can't find anywhere for downloading older versions. See, there's one that says other releases. Um, if I go to this one about um, offline installers and so on, uh, go to other releases, alternate download sites. If I go into any of these, they're all about getting the latest version. Um, okay, so all right, then maybe here I've just noticed trying Debian Live before installing. Um, so that's kind of not as hard as maybe it was, but it's not really obvious. Um, it can be a little bit awkward. Okay. Yeah, so this kind of tells you about it, but is it going to go? Panel machines lists. Yeah, again, to get the older stuff is not really taking us anywhere. It says that it's out of date. 
Um, so yeah, it's not not ideal. But I'll give you the links anyway. Well, in this case, I was going to give you a link, but the link's here, so that's good. But if you want to jump straight to it, it's just www.debian.org forward slash capital letters CD forward slash lowercase L-I-V-E. And that's the page you want to get to. And two interesting links on this page. There's this side here with links to download via BitTorrent, which, yeah, I've tried before, but it's not reliable sometimes you get a good connection you'll get it quite quickly and other times it can take a little bit long so it depends on how much time i guess on whether you wait for that to download or not um but this side here if you click on that link it'll actually take you to a web page where you can actually download the live dvd image and you can see there's various desktops um, by default on the live dvd image there uh, Cinnamon Gnome, KDE, LXDE and LXQT, Mate, there's a standard one there, I'm not sure if that's the default um, Debian one or not, and XFCE, so I prefer KDE, so I'm going to first of all download the cont uh, is it the contents or what, I don't think so, I'm not sure if one of these, no it's not that one. Is it that one there? No, it looks like there's no... Oh, yes, there it is. Sorry, it's right at the top. It's all the files. I'm going to download the signatures for... Well, they'll, it'll have the signatures for all these packages. Obviously, I'm only going to download one, so it will fail for all the other ones. But if I start that downloading... Um, it just means that I can verify that this ISO is downloaded correctly. And I'll just wait for that to complete. How long is it going to take? 16 minutes. So just wait for that to complete and then we'll carry on after that. So what I'm going to do now is to write that image to a USB stick which will allow us to boot the live image. So I'll just plug the USB stick in, get up a prompt, uh, let's just make this a little bit bigger, like that. So I assume it's gone into downloads. Yep. So what we can do now is the best thing to do first of all would be to verify the signature on that download. So we can do SHA five one two sum minus C and the name of the file with the signatures in. And as expected, because we haven't got the complete set of files, we'll get failures for them. But as you can see at the moment, it's paused. It's actually scanning the file that's just been downloaded and it's finished. So we'll just scroll back up and you can see the file we downloaded has actually passed. So that's, that's good. So next thing to do is to find out what the kernel, or rather to become a root, as uh, so do... and go back into the kernel text download directory yep uh, let's do fdisk minus l to find out what the kernel has given what designation it's given to the usb stick that i've just plugged in so it's given it sdb as the hardware identity and you can see there's something on there i know it's something that i don't need to keep um, so obviously whatever USB stick you've got just ensure that it is um, something that you're prepared to overwrite and I'm going to use DD to write this image the in file is obviously the image we've just downloaded the out file is this 
identification here, dev SDB in my case, yours may well be different. Block size I'll set to 64 kilobytes and I'll use status equals progress to monitor how this is copying. Um, what tends to happen sometimes with USBs, it may happen with this one, is that it will copy a load initially because it's buffering the image into memory and then either it will proceed at a very slow space, it may even pause at times while it's waiting for the flash device to catch up. So I'll start that off, um, it'll probably take 5 or 10 minutes and come back when this is completed. <laughs> 